from the darkness of the grave, a cross and a crown of thorns, walking from the empty tomb, opening wide the gates of life. Our Lord has defeated death and evil to show that we can rise from all that binds us to the world and the sin that weighs us down. Our Lord has defeated death and evil to demonstrate a love that is beyond our understanding, that reaches out to everyone, a saving grace to all who hear. Christ the Lord is risen today. Alleluia.
morning, friends. It is such a joy to celebrate this Easter celebration with all of you together this morning. Welcome to Castleton United Methodist Church. Dear friends, the night is over. The morning is here. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Let us respond. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Sadness has vanished. Tears are no more. Death has fled. Life is victorious. This is the day the Lord has made. We rejoice. We are glad in it. We proclaim with heart and voice, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Friends, may we share that peace and love of our risen Christ with those around us this morning. The peace of our risen Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. I invite you to share signs of peace with those around you.
be seated. In this time of prayer, if you have a prayer request, a praise, a concern, uh, we invite you to offer them by filling out a prayer card and just slip that in the offering plate, offering box plate as you leave today. You can also go to our website, castletonumc.org, and uh, hit the Pray Now button. Leave your prayer request in the chat window if you're worshiping online. Any of those ways will get your prayer concern to our prayer team and our pastor who will pray diligently for you and with you this week. This morning there is a prayer response for you. When I say, risen Lord, hear our prayer. Please respond, hear our prayer, alleluia. Let's pray. God of the bright and morning star, God of the rising sun, God of darkness banished, we praise and worship you. Together we pray for all faithful people, for every human soul that turns to you in longing and in love today and every day. Pull us out of our graves and into your life. Risen Lord, hear our prayer. Hear our prayer. Hallelujah. We pray for the universal church, for all who worship along with us around the world, from remote places to city centers. Give us the grace and strength to live the resurrection of your son, Jesus. Risen Lord, hear our prayer. Hear our prayer. Hallelujah. We pray for the nations of the earth for those in authority and for those under authority. Come from the four winds, O breath of life, and we shall live together in peace. We pray for this world, our garden home, for the rain and the snow, the seed and the sprout, for the birthing room and the last place of rest, for every new creation. Risen Lord, hear our prayer. Hear our prayer. Hallelujah. We pray for those who are in need in mind, body, or spirit. We pray especially for those we name today in this moment of silence. Risen Lord, hear our prayer. Hear our prayer. Hallelujah. In the joy and hope of this Easter morning, O oh God, give us the courage to bear your living love in every corner of our lives so that your garden, your kingdom will be so here on earth as it is in heaven. We offer this prayer to you in the name of our risen Lord, Jesus, our Christ, who taught us to pray by saying together, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Happy Easter. It is good to be in the house of the Lord with everybody this morning. If you are in our sanctuary, our physical space, will you please do us a big favor and sign the pew pads and pass them to your neighbors? If you are watching us online, can you make sure that you tap in the, type in the chat box that you have joined with us this morning? If you're worshiping with a little person this morning, there are Q QR codes around the back of the sanctuary that will link to an age-appropriate entertainment and Bible story. There's also physical pew pals in the back. And as long as we're talking about little people, have you guys started thinking about summer plans yet? Well, 
June 18th to 22nd, we have VBS right here for your young ones to join in for evenings of fun that week from 6 to 8.30. We'll start out in this room so it's super easy to find. So I encourage you to get on to castletonumc.org slash VBS to register your kiddos now to secure a space. We have already worshipped in several forms this morning, in word and in music, and we have the opportunity to worship now with our gifts, our tithes, and our offerings. This morning you have many opportunities and ways to give. You can give in the plates as they go by. You can give in the plates or the boxes at the back. You can get online and click the blue Give Now button up in the right-hand corner, or you can text that 844-531-0132 number for another secure way to give. We appreciate your generosity, and it allows us to do lots of fun and exciting things in this building. And while I've got your attention, I would be remiss to say, if I didn't say, Christ has risen.
praise the power of Jesus' name and we remember what he has done for us and what we celebrate at Easter. He is risen and we give thanks. Would you please remain standing while we sing our praise? set me free look at the wounds that give me life grows flowing from his side no greater sacrifice what he's done what he's done Please be seated as we hear together the words of Scripture. Gospel of Luke chapter 24. On the first day of the week, very early in the morning, the women took the spices they had prepared and went to the tomb. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb, but when they entered, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. While they were wondering about this, suddenly two men in clothes that gleamed like lightning stood beside them. In their fright, the women bowed down with their faces to the ground. But the men said to them, why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here. He has risen. Remember how he told you while he was still with you in Galilee? The Son of Man must be delivered over to the hands of sinners be crucified, and on the third day be raised again. 
Then they remembered his words. When they came back from the tomb, they told all these things to the eleven and to all the others. It was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary, the mother of James, and the others with them who told this to the apostles. But they did not believe the women because their words seemed to them like nonsense. Peter, however, got up and ran to the tomb. Bending over, he saw the strips of linen lying by themselves, and he went away, wondering to himself what had happened. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God.
My little boys ask the best questions. We've read a lot of books about Holy Week and Easter, of course, and my seven-year-old very inquisitively asked me once, Dad, if, if Jesus died, how was he alive again? Well, I told him that, that God brought him back to life. He replied, yes, but how did God actually do it? It's a mystery, I, I explain. Okay, Dad, but how did God actually get him alive again? And here I thought seminary was hard. <laughs> In seminary, I just quoted scriptures and theologians. But that doesn't work with a seven-year-old. So I finally said, well, God brought Jesus back to life through love and for love. Because God loved Jesus, God loves all of creation, every human who ever lived, and God loves you. That's why God raised Jesus from the dead. I think he accepted my answer that day, even though I answered the why, not the how. My son Zechariah is in good company. His question is one for the ages. Because when Mary Magdalene and the women arrived at the tomb early on the first day of the week, they didn't understand resurrection. When Simon Peter and, and the other disciple, tradition is named John, arrive at the tomb, they still did not understand. So if those first eyewitnesses to the resurrection had trouble understanding it, how do we stand a chance, right? But perhaps the resurrection is not something to be understood as much as it's meant to be experienced. In Luke's account of the discovery of the resurrection, we are immediately drawn into the darkness of the early morning when the women were preparing to come to the tomb with spices for Jesus' dead body. Yet something is different. Something is out of sorts. The stone had been removed from the entrance. Jesus' body is gone. And Luke tells us they were simply wondering about this when two men in bright clothes, angels, appeared before them. But know first that their first reaction is not one of victory over the grave, right? It's wonder, but it's also fear. In their fright, the women bow down with their faces to the ground. And it's in their wonder and fear that the first proclamation of the resurrection is given in Luke. And it's not by humans, it's by the angels, the men standing before them who tell them or ask them, why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here. He is risen. And then they seem to or remember Jesus' words about all that was to take place, but they still didn't seem to get it. They still didn't understand. So they head off to tell the disciples about what happened, but with little emotion. Did you notice that in Luke? And Luke, he doesn't convey very much emotion in them, no sense of urgency, no joy or excitement. And so you have to wonder if the first eyewitnesses of the resurrection were still overcome with some wonder and even fear. For Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary, and the other women who were at the tomb that morning went to tell the disciples, but they didn't believe the women. And not only did they not believe him, but Luke tells us their words seemed like nonsense. And isn't that how the resurrection seems. Resurrection seems like nonsense, doesn't it? That we think you can't bring dead things back to life, let alone people. And so they didn't see it, understand it, or know about the resurrection yet. And that could be true for us. We might not understand the resurrection, 
But I do believe we've all seen it in our own lives. And I believe we have experienced it. The resurrection is not a photographical moment. It wasn't an event that could have been captured in a moment or a picture and then looked at and understood. In fact, none of the Gospels describe the actual moment of a resurrection. Have you noticed that? Because who could? Instead, it's another mystery of God to be revealed, unveiled, or shown to us throughout our lives. And it's true that you can't explain the unexplainable. Sometimes you just have to sit with the mystery and let God do God's transforming work. It's hard to read only Luke's gospel account of the resurrection because I don't know if you noticed this morning, but in the first 12 verses of this chapter, nothing seems to be figured out. Did you notice that? Peter ran to the tomb by himself and all he found were strips of linen they used to cover Jesus' dead body, and he went away wondering to himself about what had happened. Something's missing in Luke. It's all fear and uncertainty. Happy Easter, everyone. Right? Nothing says happy Resurrection Sunday, happy Easter, like fear and uncertainty. But I suppose that's a part of it. Because while Luke doesn't really show us a whole lot of emotion in his account of the resurrection, he reminds us that, that whatever it is that we're feeling today, whatever we bring with us to this time of worship, whether that's uncertainty, doubt, or even fear, Whatever it is we feel, maybe joy and hope in this day, God still raises Jesus to life. The resurrection still happens, regardless of how we feel about it, and there's some comfort in that. Because I don't know how you felt this week, but I felt kind of scattered. There was a lot going on, right? And there's been a lot in the news in the last couple weeks. And I have to tell you, I always have these grand expectations for Holy Week. Like the Holy Spirit will descend on me like a dove. And sometimes that's just not the case. More often than not, we're, we're like the first women at, at the resurrection of Jesus, where we just stand by and we, and we wonder what happened and guess what? Jesus was still risen. All they had in Luke's account of the resurrection, the only evidence they found besides the angels were strips of linen lying where Jesus had once laid. Now, everyone should have strips of, of linen this morning. Do you guys have that? Small strips of linen. Go ahead and get that out. Let me see them. There we go. All right. Good job. I want to invite you to hold on to these as we go through our time of worship and our sermon this morning. And I want you to um, reflect on your life today. To consider how God has already brought new life into your life. And to reflect on how the resurrected Jesus is alive and active in your life today. Now I realize that might be a challenge, but I believe it is possible because Jesus often comes unannounced into our lives. In Luke, the disciples don't seem to get it on that first resurrection day, right? And it's not until Jesus comes unannounced to the two disciples on the road to Emmaus do they finally seem to get it. So how did God do it? I still don't know. But what we do know is that God is in the business of bringing dead things, dead people back to life. That God breathes into dry bones and makes them live again. And that's the hope of the resurrection. 
For most of us, even those named in the Gospels who experienced that first resurrection event, we we tend to limit it to a one-time historical event where the primary message is Jesus living again. But in reality, it's resurrection, it's new life for all time. The Franciscan priest Richard Rohr wrote this about the resurrection. Jesus' death and resurrection is a statement of how reality works in all time, everywhere. He teaches us that there's a different way to live with our pain, our sadness, and our suffering. We can say, woe is me, and feel sorry for ourselves, or we can say, God is in this too. And that's what we learn on Good Friday. That's what Jesus did for us. None of us crosses over this gap from death to new life by our own effort, our own merit, our own purity, or our own perfection. Each of us, from pope to president, from princess to peasant, is carried across by unearned grace. Worthiness is never the ticket, only deep desire. With that desire, the tomb is always finally empty. As Mary Magdalene discovered on Easter morning, death cannot win. We're finally indestructible when we recognize that the very thing that could destroy us is the very thing that could enlighten us. Friends, the Easter feast is a reminder to all of us to open our eyes, ears, and to witness what is happening all around us, all the time, everywhere. God's one and only job description is to turn death into life. That's what God does. That's what God does with every new springtime, every new life, every new season, every new anything. God is the one who always turns death into life. To live a resurrected life is to experience it. When we live the resurrection, we're able to see new life everywhere even in those places that might seem barren and dry and dead, God brings forth something new out of those places. And I don't just mean bulbs coming out of the ground, even though the flowers are beautiful this time of year, right? To live the resurrection is to see and experience the fullness of Christ active in our lives, bringing new life and new energy day after day after day. Yes, there might be times or weeks when I feel scattered or busy or like life is hard, that maybe God feels distant, but it won't last because God is doing what? Bringing life out of death. And so we can say with certainty this morning and throughout this week and always that I will rise from this place better than before. Because Jesus is alive and is making all things new, even me, even us. God always brings life out of death. At the beginning of worship, we shared the Easter proclamation. Christ is risen. I think you guys forgot it, except for like three of you. We, we can do better than that. Come on. We, we've already practiced a little bit this morning. So remember, when I say Christ is risen, you say? Christ is risen indeed. Nice job. And those strips of linen we had a moment ago. We're going to add something else to that response, shall we? So every time you hear that um, call and response of the Easter proclamation, I want you to wave those strips of linen. Can you do that? It's a symbol of our celebration and victory. So let's try it. Let's try it again. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Nice job. Let's try it again. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Hallelujah. 
So when we wave those white flags, friends, we're surrendering our lives, our ways, our desires to the risen Christ. We give up our old lives, our former selves, our old way, and we now choose to live for Christ, with Christ, and in Christ always, and we live that every single day. And on those days when we fail, when we struggle, when we feel like we can't take another step forward, we wave the white flag to the risen Jesus, and we say again, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Hallelujah. And we say, I will rise from this place better than before. Because Christ is alive, and he is active in my life. And that's resurrection. That's Easter. That's what we celebrate today. That yes, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. He is risen in our lives. Not just today, but always. I'm still not sure how I did in answering my son's question. But if you notice, I was pretty honest with him that none of us can really fully understand the resurrection of Christ. But, but we can experience it. And we can live it. So may this day be a day where we choose to live a new life in Christ. Where all of us, where we rise up in love. Where we live anew in hope where we live free from fear, where we live fully in the way of the risen Christ, knowing that Jesus was risen for love's sake and that love would not be stopped by Rome, the cross, death, evil, or even us. So we proclaim in word and song and by waving the white flag over and over and over again, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Let us pray. Almighty God, we can't hold back our shouts of praise and victory, for you are good. And so, God, we repeat our Easter shouts of surprise and joy again and again. For news of your victory over the powers of death and evil is news that's so startling to us, so amazing and so different from the news that bombards us day after day. So beyond our comprehension, you startle us again and again with resurrection life, bringing grace and hope and joy and love. So you and your risen power are shaping all our days. And so we praise you with people from every nation and tongue, from generation to generation. Alleluia, alleluia for who you are. You are good. Alleluia. Amen. Friends, I invite you to stand as we close by singing our praise to our risen Christ. Let us stand and sing.
Thank our musicians again and singers. What a wonderful job this morning. Thank you guys. I want to say thank you to our tech team as well who did a wonderful job this morning. Thank you guys. And we are honored by your presence this morning to celebrate that Christ is risen. Christ is oh. risen indeed. There was a pause there, but you got it. It's a great job. <laughs> Next week is still Easter, by the way. It's true. It's the second Sunday of Easter. We're still going to have that same response next Sunday, 9 a.m. traditional, 11 o'clock contemporary. You are welcome in this community of faith. All are welcome to worship here at Cassidy United Methodist Church. Next Sunday, we'll also uh, start a new worship series called Reimagine, based on the book of Acts. And we invite you to pick up, if you haven't already, um, one of these nice bookmarks as you head out this morning, and we'll be reading this week to begin our study next Sunday. So I invite you to continue this series with us from Luke to Acts throughout this summer as we reimagine together. Well, friends, we have celebrated well this morning, haven't we? Yes. And so I pray that we will go forth now as people who have seen and experienced the risen Lord Christ. Go now as people who have been touched by the resurrection, and may the blessing of God be upon you, mind, body, and spirit, today, tomorrow, throughout this season, and forevermore. And may we never stop proclaiming, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Go in peace. <laughs>